Welcome to Syntax, a Generative Introduction, 4th Edition. My name is Andrew Carney. I'm a professor of linguistics at the University of Arizona. I'm the author of your textbook, and I'll be leading you through this series of video tutorials. One of the things we talked about in the last video was how there's evidence that sentences are structured entities and that critically various groups of words can structure into constituents. In this video and the next one we're going to talk about our first hypothesis about how we can represent that constituent structure. That hypothesis is going to be in the form of phrase structure rules. Now don't get too attached to these phrase structure rules we're going to revise them in a later unit. However, this is our first pass. Um, our th doing science means starting somewhere simple and then moving to more complicated structures. Um, phrase structure rules are a formal hypothesis for representing the kinds of constituent structures we saw evidence for in the previous video, where we could see um, movement rules, modification principles, um, deletion rules or ellipsis rules, replacement, all made reference to these things we call constituents. So let's start by looking at what the kind of representation we're going to have for sentences would look like, and then we'll look at the rules that would generate that kind of structure. So here's a tree for a, a version of the sentence we looked at in the previous video. This is the tree for the man eats at fancy restaurants. Um, what you'll see here is that we have various constituents. All of the words are constituents, and then all of the phrases, those are the things that end in a P, are constituents as well. At the very top, we have a TP. TP stands for sentence. It actually stands for tense phrase, but it's the same thing as a sentence. And TPs usually consist of a subject noun phrase, that's the noun phrase on the left, and a verb phrase. In this sentence, the noun phrase consists of a determiner and a noun. The verb phrase has two bits as well. It has the verb and it has a prepositional phrase. The prepositional phrase consists of a preposition and a noun phrase, and the noun phrase consists of an adjective phrase and a noun. The adjective phrase just has an adjective in it. This structure, you will notice, is hierarchically organized. That means there are constituents inside of constituents inside of constituents. You can see this more directly in the other notation we use for representing syntactic structure, the bracketed diagram. So if you look at this bracketed diagram, although it is very hard to read, you will see, for example, that the noun nest, restaurants is embedded inside of a much greater set of constituents like uh, the prepositional phrase, the verb phrase, and the TP itself. Now, in order to get at these trees, what we're going to do is propose rules. These rules are called phrase structure rules because the tree is what we call a phrase structure. Now, here's an example of a phrase structure rule. It's the one that generates the sentence level constituent. It has a TP on the left-hand side of an arrow, then an arrow, and then it's followed by two elements, the NP and the VP. What this says is the tense phrase constituent consists of a noun phrase followed by a verb phrase in that order. At the top of our tree, we have the constituent that's being named. That corresponds to the thing on the left of the arrow. And on the, uh, underneath the lines that are connected to that are what we call the subconstituents, which are the elements that compose that constituent. In this case, it's the noun phrase and the VP. We can also represent this using the bracketed structure. So here we have a TP that contains within it the NP constituent and the VP constituent. Let's look at how these rules are structured. Now what we have here is we're using x, y, and z as variables to represent any category. So the, the um, x could be a noun, a verb, whatever. And the yp could be a prepositional phrase, the zp could be an adjective phrase, whatever. Um, this is just an abstract representation. 
what we have is on the um, left-hand side of the rule, we have the name of the constituent that we're constructing. Then we have an arrow, and the arrow should usually be read as consists of. And then the material to the right of the arrow are the elements that go underneath that XP in the tree. They are in order from left to right. So this says a YP followed by an X followed by a ZP. The X, you'll note here that the X is the same as the XP. So if this was a noun phrase rule, that X would be a noun. The other two elements, you'll notice, are both in parentheses. Parentheses means that those optionals, those elements are optional. So both the YP and the ZP are optional. The X um, the, is not optional. It's not in parentheses. So this rule says that the XP has to have an X in it. And then finally, you'll notice that there's this little plus mark. This plus mark is called a clean plus. It's similar to a clean star. K-L-E-E-N-E. -E -E. It's not clean as in C-L-E-A-N. This is K-L-E-E-N-E. -E -E. And what it stands for is you can have as many ZPs as you want. Now, a clean star means zero or more. A clean plus means one or more. Um, we get at the fact that there's zero as possible because we have the parentheses. That's a detail you don't really under, need to understand as long as you understand that what this says is um, you can have any number of optional ZPs. Okay, let's look at a, a specific example for English, and we're going to look at the phrase structure rule we have for noun phrase. We're going to propose a rule, we're going to look at more data and revise it. Um, and then we're going to look at more data, and then we're going to look at more data. And as we go along, we're going to start to see how these rules correspond to our tree structures. Um, in the second phrase structure rule uh, video, which follows this one, we will consider um, categories other than noun phrases and adjective phrases. We'll look at prepositional phrases and verb phrases and clauses and um, all of that good stuff. So, first of all, we can observe that noun phrases can, can in fact, just be bare nouns. Um, so you can have, for example, the noun phrase John. Um, we know this is a phrase, even though it's a single word, because we can put a phrase in that position. We can say the man left, right? So um, the reason why we call John a phrase is because um, you can also have a more complicated item in that position. Now, um, one thing we can deduce from this example is within the noun phrase rule, everything other than the noun will be optional. This is because the noun is what we call the head of the phrase. The uh, head of the phrase um, always corresponds to the category. So the noun is the head of a noun phrase. The um, V is the head of the verb phrase. The P is the head of the prepositional phrase, etc. Now, usually, the head is the only obligatory part of a phrase. There are some, there are some exceptions that we're going to come to in the next video having to do with functional categories, where it seems like sometimes the head of the functional category can be left off. But for most categories, like noun phrases, verb phrases, prepositional phrases, and adjective phrases, the head is always the obligatory thing in the, in the, in the phrase. Okay, so here's our rule that we have based on that piece of data John left. Um, it says a noun phrase consists of a noun. Obviously, we already know that this is going to be wrong and we're going to need to revise it. But let's look at what the tree structure for that noun phrase would look like. Notice we have both a noun phrase and an N in the tree. That's because the, the word John is a noun and it also constitutes a noun phrase. The, the line between the noun phrase and the N corresponds to that arrow. So if you have an arrow in the rule, the things to the right of the arrow will be connected to the things to the left of the arrow by a line. Um, you, can, you can also see that this rule will generate 
um, the bracketed structure where John is a noun and that noun is inside of a noun phrase. Okay, let's revise that. Um, one thing we can observe is that uh, noun phrases allow optional determiners and optional adjective phrases. You're allowed one optional determiner and as many adjective phrases as you like. Having said that, let me just point out there are at least two cases where you're allowed more than one determiner. Can you figure out what it is, what those ones are? I'm not going to do them here, but there are two cases where our rule is not going to work because you're allowed multiple determiners. But it is mostly the case that you can only have one determiner. I'm just foreshadowing what we're going to do later in this semester by telling you about the two exceptions. So, first of all, both the determiner and the adjective phrases are optional, so you can have just slippers. Um, you can have a determiner, the slippers. You can have an adjective phrase, pink slippers. You can have both a determiner and an adjective, the pink slippers. You can have multiple adjectives, so you can have pink fluffy slippers, and you can have a determiner and multiple adjective phrases, the pink fluffy slippers. And as I mentioned, in most cases, you can't have more than one determiner, so you can't, for example, say the uh, slippers. So our rule is going to have to account for these facts. So our noun phrase rule is going to have to have the following components in it. It's going to have to have the obligatory noun. It's going to have to have any number of adjective phrases and an optional determiner. And they're going to have to be in the order determiner, adjective phrases, noun. So our rule says a noun phrase consists of an optional determiner followed by any number of optional adjective phrases followed by a noun. Now let's look like at what a tree for this rule might look like. So here I'm drawing the tree for the noun phrase, the pink fluffy slippers, but this rule could account for many, many, many other such phrases. Um, you'll notice that we have the noun phrase on top, and then underneath it we have the determiner, two adjective phrases, which corresponds to adjective phrase plus, followed by the noun. Notice, by the way, that although the words pink and fluffy are not... Um, are not accompanied by other words. They are each an adjective phrase. Our rule says you have to have an adjective phrase. So you couldn't just put an adjective in uh, the position right under the noun phrase. You have to have an adjective phrase because that's what the rule says. Another thing you'll notice about this tree that might um, confuse you a little bit is my use of A's, adjective phrases and adverb phrases. I'm going to go back and forth among these notations. Part of it is because I'm not entirely convinced of the distinction between adjective phrases and adverb phrases. So instead of a, you can have adjective. And uh, instead of adjective phrase, you could have ap. Those would all be fine. Those are uh, perfectly acceptable notational alternatives. All right, let's continue on with our analysis of noun phrases. Noun phrases also allow you to have optional prepositional phrases following the noun. So, for example, you can say the book of poems, the book of poems with the red cover, the book of poems with the red cover from New York. So, uh, in the last sentence, we have three prepositional phrases of poems with the red cover and from New York. And each of those prepositional phrases modifies the word book, right, the head book. So our tree structure is going to have to reflect the fact that you can have those optional prepositional phrases. So this is a relatively uh, straightforward modification. Take a second and think about what you would do to add to our, our previous rule in order to include these prepositional phrases. It's going to look like this. A noun phrase consists of an optional determiner any number of optional adjective phrases, a noun followed by any number of optional prepositional phrases, including zero. So our rule is getting a little more complicated, but it accounts for all the facts we've seen so far. Let's make another addition. This is the fact that noun phrases can be modified by clauses, embedded clauses. 
CP stands for complementizer phrase, and it's the category we're going to use for embedded clauses. We'll come back to that in a later case. Um, so let's look at the, the noun phrase, the fact that I like haggis, or the book of poems with the red cover that I bought in New York City. The first one is what we call a factive clause, and the second one is what we call a relative clause, but that doesn't make much difference. What's important here is that clauses can modify nouns as well. In the examples I've given you here, we only have one CP. It has to be optional because we have other noun phrases without CPs in them. Can you have more than one CP modifier? Think about that. See if you can come up with any data on that point. For the moment, we're just going to go with one, so we're not going to have a plus in our rule. We're just going to have a CP there as a modifier. If you do allow more than one CP, you would simply modify this rule by putting a plus after the CP. So let's look at a more complicated noun phrase tree structure. Here's our rule. Um, and we'll sort of just break down what the rule says, and then we'll look at that tree. It says a noun phrase consists of an optional determiner, followed by any number of optional adjective phrases, followed by the head noun, followed by prepos any number of prepos prepositional phrases, followed by an optional CP. Okay, so here's a tree structure. This tree structure makes use of multiple adjective phrases, which is permitted, only one prepositional phrase, and no CP. It just contains a prepositional phrase. This is the big yellow book of poems. Each of these constituents, the D, the two adjective phrases, and the prepositional phrase, modify the head noun book. They are sisters to the head noun book, so they are um, effectively going to be part of that constituent because of that. You can look at the bracketed structure underneath the tree. I won't go through it. Pause the video if you'd like, and you will see that there's a direct correspondence between this uh, bracketed structure and the tree structure. All right, let's talk about adjective phrases and adverb phrases. As I mentioned to you before, I, you could easily collapse these into APs with A's if you wanted. Um, that is a common analysis uh, for people. But if you prefer to keep adjectives and adverbs apart, you can use the rules I've given you here. Adjectives and adverbs can stand on their own, just like uh, nouns can stand on their own. So an adjective phrase can consist of just an adjective like red, and, as in the red lipstick, or uh, quickly, as in the adverb phrase quickly. Um, but they can also be modified by adverb phrases. So for example, you can modify quickly with the intensifier rather. John left rather quickly. And you can um, also uh, modify red with the adverb phrase very. So our rules also have to allow for an optional adverb phrase to precede the head. One thing you'll notice about this um, is I haven't put a plus in. Now, it is certainly the case that you can say something like the very, very red lipstick, right? Or the very, very, very red lipstick. So why haven't I put a plus in this rule? The reason for that is because in the case of very, very red, the first very doesn't modify red. Doesn't modify red. The first very modifies the second very. And then those two varies together modify red. So the, re the recursion or repetition of the word very is accounted for by the fact that our rule here allows varies to be embedded inside of varies. So you can always have, if very is an adverb, you can always have it modified by another adverb phrase. So that puts, um, very, very, that's a very modifying a very. And if you have very, 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 that's a very modifying a very, which together modify a very, which together modify the, ad the adjective red. So you don't need a plus sign here because this rule is recursive. It allows you to embed adverb phrases inside of other adverb phrases. 
Okay, let's uh, look at these trees. It's important uh, for us to be clear about what the head of each phrase is. Um, it's less clear with adverb phrases because you have multiple categories called adverb. But um, what you'll see here is that the rather is the head of the embedded adverb phrase and quickly is the head of the main adverb phrase. That's because rather modifies quickly. Um, notice that you cannot have a tree here that just consists of adverb phrase with two adverbs in it. That's because the rule doesn't allow it. Our rule, if we go back here, says that an adverb phrase can have an adverb phrase modifier. It doesn't say you can have two adverbs in a row. The first thing has to be an adverb phrase. So in this tree, that first thing is this rather which is an adverb phrase, because that's what the rule tells us we have to have. It's more clear when we look at an adjective phrase, because they're of different categories, if you believe that. So here, very is the head of the adverb phrase, and red is the head of the adjective phrase. Okay, with that in mind, I'm going to introduce you to something really important. If you learn nothing else in this class, about syntactic theory, the next thing I tell you is the thing you should learn. It has to do with the fact that you ha can have multiple adjectives or adverbs in a row, but they have very different structures. And the different structures are systematic. So take, for example, the big yellow balloon and compare it to the very yellow balloon. Here, what we have are um, two A categories, either adjectives or adverbs, right before a noun. But if you think carefully about this, ask yourself the question, what does big modify? Does it modify yellow or balloon? Also, what does very modify? Does it modify yellow or balloon? So in the first noun phrase, big modifies balloon, right? It doesn't modify yellow. Whereas in the second noun phrase, very modifies yellow. It doesn't modify balloon. It's not very balloon. The, we're going to represent this with different uh, tree structures. So in the case where you have two adjectives that are equally modifying balloon. So it's a balloon that's both yellow and a balloon that is big. Those two adjective phrases are both what we call sisters to that noun head. They're both on the same level. They're both, um, if you like, daughters of the noun phrase. Contrast that with very yellow balloon. Here, the very is modifying yellow, so it's part of the adjective phrase. It's not immediately part of the noun phrase. There's sort of that level of structure in between. In this case, the very yellow, the very modifies the yellow, and then it's that whole adjective phrase that modifies balloon, the very yellow balloon. Um, this difference in structure captures a general principle we have about these phrase structure rules. The principle of modification says the following. If an XP modifies some head Y, then that XB must be Y sister. So look at these little trees here. The adjective phrase and the NP are the mothers, and they each have two daughters. They have their head, which is the adjective and the noun, and then they have another element, the adverb phrase and the adjective phrase. Those elements underneath the noun phrase and the adjective phrase are the daughters. And in each of these cases, um, the head is sister to, meaning shares a mother with, um, another element. And that other element modifies that head. So in this tree, the adverb head modifies the adjective, and the adjective head modifies the noun. This is the principle of modification, possibly the most important principle you will learn in syntax. That structure reflects these kinds of modification relationships. In the next unit, 
we're going to talk about other categories and we're going to see how the principle of modification applies within them.